I look a lot like Cooking Mama. It's okay, Mama will help you. <sighs> Hello, salut, hola, or whatever language you speak, welcome. So, in my research endeavors of the 18th century fashion, I have come to terms with myself wanting to create my own 18th century gown. <laughs> But alas, I am stuck in quarantine, and thus no way for me to get the necessary materials needed to create this own, my own gown. But what I did find in my sewing stash was that I had a lot of pink floral cotton, which floral cotton was quite common in the 18th century. But I didn't have enough of it to make my own gown. I did realize though that I had enough fabric to create an 18th century gown for my American Girl. But this is my first time sewing an 18th century gown, and sewing an actual gown. So I decided to get help from American Dishes Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. This book is amazing. I, re I read it for research and it has helped me so much dive deep into 18th century fashion. 10 out of 10 recommend this book. It is amazing. Please get this book. <laughs> Looking through all these beautiful gowns, I realized that I really wanted to make a 1770s Italian gown. This gown was quite popular from the 1770s to the 1790s as it had a nice pleated back that was either two pieces or four pieces and it was made with nice floral fabric which was again common in the 18th century. So I went ahead, got my fabric and decided to start off with an under petticoat. But by the time I started filming I already did the under petticoat. So, day one is me creating a 18th century frock. <clears throat> day one. Goals for today. Measure the doll. This seems to be pretty easy. Um, get and finish the rump. For the back, I already did the under petticoat, so that is all done. I don't need to worry about that. Um, but I do need to make the rump for the Italian gown. So I am going to go measure and have my handy dandy journal that I keep all my sewing notes in. So I'm going to get to work on that. So I got her measurements and I'm going to work on her rump now, which is based off 18th century, late 18th century rumps during that time, which were quite popular during the late 18th century as they created a subtler full back and they didn't need the wide panniers anymore because that was not into fashion. So I'm going to work on the rump and I will figure out what I'm going to do after. So I found this cotton, which I feel like would be really good for the rump as it will not be seen and it's white. It also matches the cotton that I used for her underskirt or under petticoat. So I figured those were match really nicely. And yeah, so I'm just going to draw out a rough sketch on a piece of paper of the pattern and then I will put it on here, trace it out and sew it. So I was doing the calculating the math according to the book where it told me to do the waist circumference times that by two and then minus the hip circumference and then I will get the amount to add to my rump. So that I figured that out and then I have decided, okay, so according to the image in the book, I was trying to figure out how much to make this curve and how to make this longer. So if I know that this will be in half, which when I did math to figure out her waist, so the back or half of the waist, how long that was, that was about five and six eighths, and then divided that by two to get how much 
each should be in half and then divide that by two again so I know how it will be folded and develop the waist which it's gonna be a tiny rum which I started to realize and I guess that's okay I mean it makes sense but as long as it adds fullness then I feel like it's good and if I can add I think this would be centimeters because I don't think I can add nine and three seven fives of in fullness so that would be way too big than what is needed so I am going to figure it out on this piece of paper make a little pattern and then start cutting a little mock-up because I have extra fabric of this cotton so I'm gonna make a mock-up see how it looks then do the actual thing so I have my pattern and now I am going to pin it to my fabric and cut four of these tiny little bum rolls and then I'm gonna cut a square that fits the waist and also enough give to add pleats to add more fullness to the skirt. So that is what I'm going to do and I'll be back. Life to me is now that I cut it that it is the entirety of her waist so I am going to cut that down maybe instead of two because I was supposed to originally cut four maybe instead of four I think I may just fold it and then sew along and sew along the edge so it still keeps that shape or I may have to cut it down because yes this line is the seam waist but where it would be it would be quite huge on on her so I am going to cut it a little bit more and fix that. But my pillow and me So it is nine o'clock. I am going to stop for the day. I finished sewing all the small squares. I have the skirt part 
need to hem it and get this little pleat and then connect the two pieces and also stuff these little guys but I am tired I have to do more homework and I will work on that tomorrow so until day two day two So the goal for today is getting most of it done as I don't have a lot of time until I need to finish this project. So I will be, instead of hand sewing it all, I will be machine sewing it because I don't have a lot of time to finish this project. So I am going to machine. The goal for today is to finish the rump, work on the petticoat that will be the outer layer or the outer skirt of the gown and maybe finish the entirety of the gown. So I have a lot of work cut out for me, but I am excited and let's get to it. Oh how he'd hold her, head on his shoulder, and oh how he'd tease him, he'd dip with his knees. He'd draw her to a corner and he'd steal a little sweet while they were dancing around, all around, all around. They were the talk of the town, and when the band was played, that hesitation you could hear her say There's some sensation and the people would stay Till the break of the day While they were dancing around Girls around in the town all love to dance with young brown But they all knew Miss Pearl Go on if you dare, but you could hardly blame the girl. On the floor she'd stay, dancing night and day, just to keep them all away. Dancing around, they'd be dancing around. Oh, how he'd hold her, head on his shoulder, and oh, how he'd tease them. He'd dip with his knees, he'd drop her to a... So I finish the rump. It is super cute. Got a little bump pads. So I'm going to try this on her, see how it looks, and then I'm going to take measurements so I know how long the back of the gown needs to be over the rump. So after I'm done with the rump, which I completed, I don't I need to start on the petticoat which goes over the rump that will be viewed outside of the gown. It's usually made out of like silk or silk taffeta, but I do not have any of those fabrics so I'm just gonna have to use what I have and that will be cotton. I'm planning on using this floral cotton for the gown itself, which was actually quite popular in the 18th century. They would actually wear a lot of floral cottons that were quite expensive to be honest they cost a couple shi they cost a couple shillings or maybe a pound itself because back then they did use British coin unlike today when we use actually American dollars but back then they used British coin and so this was actually quite expensive along with multiples of fabric but it was actually still quite popular and worn on gowns themselves so I am going to use that because I have a lot of it, so might as well decrease some of this cabbage that I have, which is a historical term for excess fabric. And so I'm gonna get rid of some of this cabbage, and since I do not have any silk taffeta, I'm using this navy blue cotton, and I thought it would look really well with the floral cotton that I have, since sadly it's not silk taffeta, which would be a lot more historically accurate. I don't have those supplies since we're in quarantine, and I can't really go out and get those supplies, so I'm sticking with what I have and decreasing my family's cabbage patch. So we are going to go draft a pattern for this using the one in the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking, and then I am going to cut the fabric. I do not have enough time to do a mock-up, sadly, so I'm just going to go in and start sewing. Luckily, there's still a lot of this fabric, so I can, if I need to scrap it, I can. So let's, let's get started on the petticoat. 
So what I'm doing here is just taping together two pieces of paper to make sure I have enough length for the pattern piece. Then I am marking off my lines of where I want the length and the width to go. Checking my notes and American Duchess book to make sure I have the right measurements. <laughs> So here I'm just tracing the pattern with some soap so I could see where I want to sew. Then I just cut up the pattern pieces. Pin where I want the pleats to go on the dot. Then sew by machine. Then lots and lots of heading. So, it turned out my battery died, so I didn't get the rest of the footage, but I did finish the petticoat! So it is all hemmed around the edges and on the inside, and I added little strings to tie and close it. Usually in 18th century gowns, it would be connected, there would be a tape that goes around the edge, and it would tie in the back and then tie in the front, but since I don't have a lot of the necessary materials, I dealt with what I had. So I think I can either tie it like this, or just tie the sides together. I haven't figured out which I'm going to do, but we'll see how it works. Yeah, I'm going to stop for the day. I feel like I got a lot done, and tomorrow I am going to do the actual gown itself, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. So we'll catch you tomorrow. Day three. So the goal for today is to do the actual gown, which we finished the petticoat, we finished the under petticoat and the rope, and now we need to do the actual gown itself. May I add some accessories, we'll see how much time I have. But yeah, so I'm gonna go dive deep into that. Let's go! So back here on the floor. So today we are going to do the actual gown, which will be made out of this cotton, and may use some of this white cotton for the lining, which will may or may not have it, I may or may not line it. According to the American Duchess book, which I am using for this entire project, it does start off with it being lined, so it has you line it and then put it over. So we will see if I have time for that. If not, we're just gonna go straight into it. I have a lot of this fabric, so I'm not like too worried about lining it or doing a mock-up first, so we should be good there. So I think I'm gonna start drafting the pattern and make sure it fits my doll. I have my notes on her measurements in my sewing notebook, so we should be, should be good to start. So let's get to it! What I'm doing here is drawing the pattern directly on the doll's body instead of using measurements and then drawing the pattern. This practice was common among the mantua makers of the 18th century, but instead of draping powder paper on the wearer, they would directly drape the fabric over the wearer and cut the pattern pieces while they are on the model. I'm just tweaking this practice a bit to cut my own pattern for the future reference.
Then I place the patterns on the fabric and pin them into place. Cut. And then sew the back panels together. I then decided to sew the back pleats by hand instead of by machine as I didn't want it to show through to the back side of the fabric so I carefully hand stitched each pleat and checking the back once in a while to make sure I didn't have any stitches sewn through. Then I sewed the bodice pieces together via machine and then started to hem everything. And trust me, there is a lot of hemming. So while I'm sewing, I thought I could share the history of the Italian gown. The Italian gown came into popularity from the 1770s through the 1790s, replacing the well-known English gown. These two gowns are similar in shape, but both can be a la la trousse, or looped up and pulled up. But the main difference is the back of the bodices. An English gown has a triangular shaped back with box pleats, whereas the Italian gown has a smooth back and that is pieced together by two or four pieces. This gown can be made out of all sorts of fabric from worsted wool to silk satin, but it was very popular to make these gowns using floral cotton imported from India. This gown took the world by storm and eventually replaced the sack gown or robe à la française for full dress in the 1780s. Then it was time for me to start the thing I was dreading to start the entire time. The sleeves! This took so long to set, to pattern. I had multiple different patterns for each of the sleeves. I ended up choosing the 1790s pattern. As the American Duchess people said that you can set the sleeves in any way you want. So I decided to use the 1790s pattern because the 1770s pattern was just way too complicated for me to comprehend. <laughs> Next was the skirt panel. I did this by just cutting the length of the fabric across the entire width of the fabric. I did this to make sure I had enough fabric for the pleats that were going to be across the entire back of the gown. It is 12 o'clock, aka midnight. I am exhausted, but I finally finished the gown and I will be showcasing you that after. So I thought the process went really well. I think I had some issues with the gown itself and also the situation. But other than that, I feel really good about what I created and I'm super excited to show you guys.
final look. I am super proud of what I did in the three days that I did this project. I had a lot of issues, especially with the sleeves. The sleeves were a little rough. But then again, sleeves are always a little rough. But it was so much fun to do. If I could have done this project again, I would have definitely had the right materials. So silk, taffeta for the petticoat, floor cotton, which is already fine, but the correct thread as well. I didn't have any light pink thread. I only had navy blue thread and white thread. I had another pink thread, but it was super hot pink and that would not look good with this floral pink gown. So what I had to do was use white thread and it shows through a lot and I kind of regret that, but I had to use what I had to use. So if I could do this project again, I will definitely get the right materials and try and make it historically accurate as possible and entirely hand sew this project. This gown is not entirely hand sewn. About 75% of it is, which I'm quite proud of myself. I only did bigger pieces that were much larger and time consuming to machine sew. So I machine sewed the bodice pieces together I also machine sewed the skirt of the petticoat panels, which was fine. But other than that, everything was entirely hand sewn, and I am super proud of myself. I had a lot of issues, poked myself multiple times with a needle. You can probably see that in some of the footage. I'm sorry. But other than that, I am super proud of everything that happened. And I can't wait to do this again and to create my own 18th century gown in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a lot of fun for me to create an 18th century gown. And I hope it was fun for you to watch. Keep up with your sewing endeavors and I'll see you next time.